Hi there, my name's Ian Poe, and this afternoon I'd like to show you how to uh, make something basic and straightforward for the garden, perhaps to grow your vegetables in. To start with, what we'll do is uh, roughly put some ideas down on a piece of paper, try and sketch it out to give some idea of what the thing's looking like. So what we should have there is a visual interpretation of what's here. From there, we would start putting some information onto it, put some, you know, some, some detail into it. We're going to put these information onto a cutting list. So effectively what I've got here is uh, the posts. I've decided to write down the sizes of the post. They're the height. So we've got 140 by 45 by 45. This A would be this piece here, the trim around the top. That is 610 mil by 70 mil wide by 20 mil. And then we've got the four side bits, 580 by 140 by 20. So we're going to cut the piece of timber and what we'll do is we'll start from this end. As a general rule of thumb, what you want to do is always lay the tape out along the piece of timber with the readings running from the left hand side to the right hand side. So then in this instance, because the tape's looking at me with my square end now, I will put the tape on there and I'll measure up and I'll put a line at 580. Take the tape off. What you can't do at the moment is multiples of 580, trying to be clever because you won't allow for the saw cut. So just start off nice and simple, saw cut 580. Modern saws tend to have this arrangement which allows you to do a 90 degree or a 45 degree measuring. So with the timber on the deck, everything nice and comfortable, put the saw against the edge, bring it up to your pencil line, draw a line. Okay. Um, so I've put the pencil line across the side there and what we're going to do is cut this piece of timber on the left hand side and what you can do there is there and saw like that or if you don't have a bench hook and what you have is a G-cramp, G-cramps are great, take another piece of timber, stick it on and then use that as a spare piece to cramp. Starting off, uh, a lot of people tend to start like this, I tend to try and keep my thumb away so what's a good idea is to use a small piece of wood, put a piece of wood against the side, your hands up out of the way, and then you can start from there. Get the thing going, nice and gently. It's the saw that's gonna do the cutting, not you forcing it. So to ensure that I'm cutting to the pencil line, I'm actually looking right at where the teeth are cutting. Now it's changing pitch. And so I know it's going to come to the end, I'll hold on to it, and there we go. We've um, cut all our bits of timber, and what we're going to do is just put them together against our drawing and try and visualise what we've got. So what we should have now, the framework should be 600 millimetres square, and our individual bits should be 580. So we need to pre-drill to start with, and what I'm going to do is just mark roughly where I want the screws on one piece of wood. And what this would do, I'm trying to make sure that the screw will actually go into the timber behind. So if I guessed it, if I took it away and then thought, oh, I'll put some screws wherever I like, there's a fair chance I'm going to miss. So what I'll do is put it back on, measure the holes, go from there. So I've put the rough holes in where I need them, get a tape measure. That one there is 25. 25, we've got all our measurements on the side there. We get the screws that we're going to use. We've got two different types of screws. One's got a shank on, one's threaded all the way up through. We will use the one with the shank on. So there's the drill. Into the block of wood, which is a waste piece of wood. And that will just save the bench or whatever you're using. Um, and there we are. And we'll just replicate this through. Right, okay. Um, I've drilled everything, I've cut everything, I've just reassembled everything that I'm doing, just going to double check it against some drawing, having a quick look, four corner posts which I've got, and it's particular attention to this joint. Take two screws, put them in the pilot holes that we started, nice and straight along there, everything's nice and collected, there. Now what we can do is put our trim on the top. What we're going to do now, run them around 
Have a look at the bits of timber. Timber's a natural product. What we've got here is cedar from Somerset. Difference with the, um, there's really a great opportunity now to be using local materials. So on top of the local material, uh, the, the local food and everything else, you can start buying timber from Somerset, which is grown, it improves uh, the whole cycle, improves money going into local woodlands, and you have a fantastic product. This is Western Red Cedar. It's a, a, an aromatic, rich, durable timber. And this particular stuff has come something like 20 miles away. If it come from uh, Scandinavia, you'd be talking about a thousand miles. And then fix from there. Once again, don't want to go too close to the ends because you'll end up splitting. So come back in from the saw cuts, from the end of any timber, you want to come back in about 15 millimetres, which is about a centimetre and a half. Put the screw in. Down we go. Put that one on. Right, okay, we've put the old box together now, and there's a couple of ways of cleaning it up. One of the important things that you want to be thinking of is just take the arises off as well. Now, the arras edge is a term used for this, this sharp edge here. So if I use a piece of sandpaper with my hand up and down like this, it's, it's, it's okay, but what you run the risk of is actually catching a splinter and it going over the top. And the downside, if that wasn't bad enough, is the fact that you can't really get into the corners very well. So going back commercially, what would we do? We'd put it on a block. Once again, your hands are up out of the way. You can apply a good pressure, it's nice and flat. So just run it around. Gently run your hands around, and what you want to be doing is watching for splinters, and then eventually end up so it's nice and smooth where you're not going to get any splinters, and it's going to weather down in the garden later.